Now that you've seen a few examples using static equilibrium principles, let's go over a practical application. In this situation, you have a crate hanging from a couple of ropes from a pivot up here at point C, and there's a force being applied at B. The find statement says to find the smallest angle that can be used without breaking the ropes. The first step is to draw a free body diagram. Your free body diagrams always need a sign convention. And now we need to figure out what to draw a free body diagram of. So looking at this particular object, we could draw a free body diagram of point B. There would be a force pulling towards the right because the rope is being pulled towards the right and there would be a force pulling to the left too because every force has an equal and opposite reaction. So a force pulling to the right would yield a force pulling to the left. The two forces would cancel out and the sum of the forces in the x direction would be zero. That would not be very helpful. I would not recommend drawing a free body diagram anytime you see this hash notation. So this point C up here is an anchor. This hash notation means it's attached to the rest of the world. If you try to draw a free body diagram of this, you're going to have to have a whole bunch of unknowns. We could draw a free body diagram of the box and you would see that the weight of the box is equivalent to the force pulling up in this rope. The most useful thing, however, is to draw a free body diagram of point A. So at A, we've got three things going on. First of all, we'll call this force AD. Next, we've got force AB going towards the right. Finally, we've got force AC going up and towards the left. The next thing you want to determine is we need to have a, something that's known in this particular problem, and that thing is AD. We know AD because we're given the mass. Once again, please do not confuse the mass with the weight. So in an ox comp, we would need to calculate the weight based on the mass. Remember that your auxiliary computation is a format free zone. And also please remember that you're going to use 9.81 meters per second squared for gravity. Okay, now we can solve this particular problem. But before I go ahead and do so, let's do what I said earlier about looking at the x direction and looking at the y direction. In the y direction, we have one unknown. We don't know ACY, AC's y component. In the x direction, we don't know AB and we don't know AC's x component. So there's one unknown in the y direction, two unknowns in the x direction. So we're actually going to start with the y direction. You will need to start with stating your assumption of static equilibrium. Followed by your zero statement. After that's a where statement. A D Y simply equals a negative A D. A B has y has no y component, therefore it's zero. And AC's y component equals a positive sine theta times AC. Now looking at this equation, when we plug these values in, obviously we're going to plug in AD because we don't know ADY. On this third line though, we don't know ACY, so there's one unknown on the left. And it might look like to you like we have two unknowns on the right. You might think we don't know theta and we don't know AC. But actually, we do know AC. AC is our constraint, and I'm going to set it equal to 10 kilonewtons or 10,000 newtons. You might wonder, how can I know that AC is 10,000 newtons? Well, that's the constraint. That's the maximum force those ropes can hold. Just to give you a quick example, here's a quick sketch of the original diagram. So there's AC, AB, and AD. And now suppose, for example, that instead of looking at the y direction, I looked at the x direction first, and I set AB equal to 10,000 newtons. There's a pretty big problem with that. AC has an x component and a y component. It has to have a y component that is equal to AD in order for static equilibrium to be true. So there is going to be a y component of some type. It's going to equal 1962 newtons. If we set AB equal to 10,000 newtons, ACX for static equilibrium to be true would also have to be 10,000 newtons. And you can see the issue. AC is going to be the square root of ACX squared plus ACY squared which the combination of 10,000 newtons and 1962 newtons is going to be greater than 10,000 newtons. So this force right here would actually exceed 10,000 newtons. Therefore, the problem would not be 
accurate. So that's why we're applying the 10,000 newtons to AC and not to AB. Now we'll plug those things into our zero statement. And solving this equation for theta, plug the numbers in, and we'll find that the smallest angle that could be used is 11.3148 degrees. In this particular case, we utilize static equilibrium to solve for an angle rather than a force. Still stating the assumption of static equilibrium is required. Also, please notice something I've seen a lot of students do in the past. Make sure that you have arrowheads on all your forces. That's always required. If I don't have an arrowhead on AC, I really have no basis by which to say that AC's Y component is positive or negative.